live. Welcome to the first ever uh, episode of Community Currencies Now, where we talk about the how do we get the you know young, new, fresh money uh, that's powered by the people in their hands so they can bring it uh, more value to their communities. We have a really amazing crew to explain all the power that is in community currencies with us right now. And so, uh, well, let's just do a quick round of introductions. Uh, I'll start. My name is Griff Green. I work with the Common Stack, Giveth, and a whole bunch of other uh, cool projects. And uh, I'm really excited to see what we can do with blockchain tech to empower people to build their own economies around causes. That's, that's where I generally spend my, most of my time. And well, since Mark's on here twice, I'll, uh, I'll pass it to you. Mark? Hey. So I'm here twice because it's my phone. I, I did a little, uh, I'll show you. I'll share it with you later. But uh, I'm Mark uh, Smogon from Fuse. And uh, we're building uh, a, an infrastructure for community currencies. And before Fuse, I was uh, starting a, a company called Colu, which were, was building a protocol called Colored Coins and eventually doing uh, a community currency in, in Tel Aviv and in, in a bunch of other places. Before that, I did another company. So basically, I'm in crypto since 2013. Before that, e-commerce for 20 years. Um, so uh, yeah, a long track record, uh, uh, but mostly technical. Nice. And you can pass it to someone. Ah, so Theodore, continue. Like. <laughs> okay. Hello, everyone. And thanks to, for this amazing opportunity. Uh, I'm a PhD student at Central European University uh, in uh, network science, network and data science. Uh, since 2014, I've been working and supporting uh, um, IJCCR, International Journal on Community Currency Research, and uh, RAMIX, uh, that is the Research Association on Monetary Innovation and Community Currency Research. Uh, I was just the kind of IT guy helping them to manage the website, nothing special, but uh, I think uh, it was a very amazing experience because in these years I uh, keep cultivating my passion for community currency systems and that was a, a very good uh, uh, kickoff. And I passed uh, to Giuseppe. Uh, hi everybody, I'm Giuseppe Littera uh, from Saramana, my spot right now. I'm one of the co-founders of uh, Sardex.net. I've been involved pretty, I wouldn't say knee deep, but up to here uh, on community credit in particular and mutual credit to be specific uh, through Sardex, which has now been running for 10 years and it's going to be 11 soon and um well yeah it's uh, been a nice ride i work on the research and development side of the company uh, that's why uh i already know mark i know grief by fame i mean uh, from twitter uh i didn't know julio nice, nice to meet julio and um yeah uh, i don't know i think that's that does it and, I, and think, I pass it to Julio, I think, because <laughs> that's it. <laughs> hey, thanks. Thanks, Giuseppe. My name is Julio uh, Alinares. I'm from Guatemala. Now I'm based in Berlin, working on a project called Circles UPI, um, which is uh, at the moment trying to uh, make a basic income currency from, from the bottom up. So it works sort of like a mutual credit system uh, on, on crypto. Right now we're on the, um, on the, on the common network. We're going to move to XDAI soon. Uh, and yeah, I'm very happy to be here. I'm also part of the Basic Income Earth Network. I do a lot of uh, work in terms of connecting uh, the different uh, basic income uh, groups around the world. And also right now with uh, my uh, with my partner Gustav, we're starting this Community Currency Alliance to figure out how to connect all the community currencies all over the world, uh, figure out how to share knowledge, help each other, uh, solve common bottleneck problems and make uh, make it so anybody in the world can issue their own mutual credit uh, community currency wherever they are and thanks nice. you for being here ah, thanks julio thank you guys uh thank you all for coming and bringing so much expertise 
I figured we might as well just start with Pepe. Uh, you, uh, you, hopefully you can tell us a little bit about Sardux and maybe uh, go deep into the difference between mutual credits and, and currencies. Okay, uh, so well, um, Sardex starts uh, right after the financial crisis in 2009 uh, with a basic, basic, very, very, very basic mission, which was helping uh, small and medium sized companies in the local economy, like go through uh, the credit crunch that, that reached uh, basically with six months lag from Lehman to, to the streets here. And, um, and so uh, in, in that case, what, what, we, what we did, and that's the core of how we understand uh, uh, community credit, uh, is that it, it is so far a complementary uh, economic and, and trade system. It's network structured. We provide a platform to a, a very diverse community of companies, uh, workers, as well as, as consumers uh, now. Um, so, um, and, and the key aspect I would say in, in this way, uh, crypto, is the, or like, let's say the distributed ledger space or it is sort of uh, catching up with, with practices that uh, are in some, some, ways, some ways ancient uh, and, and in some others modern because what we do uh, from the day we started was uh, possible because we had a cloud platform and, and we're still running uh, on the cloud. Um, and, and, but, but again, the, the technology is only secondary. The, 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 main, the main purpose of these things is at least in our view, and the, the reason why we, we do still exist is that we, uh, we offer uh, uh, a very powerful uh, uh, um, set of tools to companies. So we ask for, uh, for a fee, for a subscription fee. Uh, Sardex ain't free. It, it is not, uh, I wouldn't say it's super cheap. Uh, it's not expensive as traditional finance, I would say totally not extractive, but we need to survive. So, uh, but, but the companies get like a toolbox of, 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 of things uh, like, uh, like the credit line, like the ability to, to have an online shop or uh, to do payments. And again, all by creating the, the, the credits themselves. That, that's the key aspects. So we set the limits in the system because that's the way it works so far in his work. Uh, th th that's an interesting like uh, future avenue to explore. But so far we as, a, as, as an operator, uh, we have to set the boundaries, but we do this also uh, in parallel to what the market demands. So we have to keep an eye on the local currency market to see that you, you don't have like a million lawyers uh, in the network and no grocers, you know, that's not gonna work. So what we've learned is that you have to have as much diversity as possible. And there are elements which are incredibly hard for local economies uh, to, uh, or, and, and I would say community credit systems and community currency. Well, this all universe, there are some, uh, barriers that go beyond technology and go even beyond the will of the people uh, uh, in terms like you can have the best community ever on the freest platform ever uh, with the highest level of peer trust and still if you need oil if you need uh, whatever well man you need fiat uh, or you need some components in your supply chain. And I mean, I'm talking from an island, which in a way is uh, already like f f uh, a part and interdependent it is already in a network because we actually do not live in autarky. I mean, there, there, there's a single European market here as well. Uh, but again, uh, I can tell you through, through the, the experience uh, here that uh, you can be the best, like offer the best tech, 
best pricing for the market, best product offering. If we're talking about non-convertible, and Sardex is not convertible to euros, that, that's key aspect. And, 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 and is peer generated, issued, peer destroyed, but you cannot convert it. And in that case, to make it valuable, you need fungibility. And there you go with the energy things or the broken supply chains. Like we had people asking for iPhones in Sardex. And our answer was, well, uh, why don't you buy local food, save yourselves a couple of euros, and then go buy all your iPhones that you like. But this shit is meant to foster local food, local people, uh, local energy, and the like. And local is global. I mean, that, that, that I can also say that the same sort of problems uh, uh, appear everywhere at random, normally, and during crisis like what we've, we're going through, like the need for, I would say, uh, uh, banking services or basic credit services, not depending on the legacy of whatever kind. Uh, and really the tech is the least of my worries. I'm not uh, like a, uh, and actually with Mark, we've worked with, with like mixing cloud and chain. I'm totally agnostic to that. The point is how you do what you do, uh, is it legal or not? Or, and again, the gray area is, uh, is something that will uh, not help adoption. I mean, we had to go through a million oops and, and we have to go a million oops every day to stay in line. Like our re regulatory space is a centimeter square and, and we gotta be very careful. Uh, that, that, that's also like, I mean, and I'm all for like permissionless innovation, but the wor world today ain't that permissionless. That, and I think I gave you a good, uh, good answer, I think. Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay. Does anyone have any questions? Um, Giuseppe, uh, you mentioned that uh, there is a non-convertibility between euros and Sardex, uh, and you said that this is key to Sardex. Uh, can you explain more? I lost the last bit. Um, um, there is no convertibility. Can you come again, please? I said there is no convertibility between Sardex and euros, correct? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I was wondering why is that and how is that key to the success of Sardex? Oh, why is that? Uh, okay, the, 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 a very pragmatic answer would be uh, 2010, I was broke, my friends were broke, people were closing down businesses because the banks weren't lending, there was really no euros around. So what do you do? You get together, figure out how to create a community currency. And in that case, it's community credit because it's trust between, between me and others. And actually it's trust between the networks and uh, as a whole and, and, and members between each other. So the reason why there is no convertibility is really, actually there are two reasons. One, is that it is a different form of money. Like the, the, the understand, like if you, if you grasp mutual credit, uh, 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 you see that it's not a, a, a stereotypical uh, form of money because the supply is elastic, the issuance is distributed and the, the destruction is distributed. And, and, and that's a key element. And, and, and I would argue, how can you convert something with these features to something like even DAI or even the dollar or the euro, which ju are just born, live, die in different ways. is water and oil. And, and uh, I mean, they don't really mix. But in reality, like we do lots, like our members, there's 4,000 companies. And, and, and this is beyond like the consumer stuff is 50 credits and, you know, it, it's, it's for shopping. Oh, we lost but, you for a sec. Okay, wait. Okay, still, uh, I'm, I'm finishing my gigabytes. Okay, so 
uh, I love to, uh, my connection is really bad. So uh, I hope it lasts for a little bit. Try to answer and get back inside where I get the Wi-Fi from the house. Um, um, it's okay. I mean, we, why don't we, we, we have a lot to talk about in this hour. So we'll just come back to you while you get good internet and then uh, we'll dive back, we'll dive deeper into mutual credit. Uh, for the moment, though, I would yeah. love to okay, dive in. Let me just hop out one second. I'll be back. Okay. Uh, but I mean, it's a great time to transition to the work that Mark is doing uh, with Fuse.io. Do you want to dive into that, Mark? Uh, sure. I think uh, we still uh, need to chew a bit about uh, mutual credits because uh, um, uh, you need to understand that uh, what we are doing is like a layer below it. Uh, so Fuse uh, is building uh, an infrastructure for community currencies. Um, I think uh, the perspective that I had uh, about this space was when, when my previous company um, was trying to do a community currency in Tel Aviv. And the first version was just like, we saw that a lot of, we have a lot of traction uh, from people that just come from different places in the world and trying to mint a currency on the Bitcoin blockchain. And this is what uh, pre preceded the Ethereum. So in 2014, 15, there was a wave of uh, uh, what was called colored coins protocol. So it was a way to, to just take Bitcoin transactions and paint them. This is gold and this is a movie ticket. Uh, this transaction represents a, a stock uh, or even, you know, brand equities. A lot of stuff that people do uh, nowadays, but uh, uh, th those were like early ideas and experiments. And, um, <clears throat> what we, we said is let's uh, take a pause and look at different solutions because Bitcoin was definitely not delivering. Uh, Bitcoin didn't want us. Uh, uh, there was Bitcoin bloat. It wasn't meant for that use case. Uh, there was a lot of animosity between teams, no collaboration. Uh, so we said, oh, we'll, we'll just start and, and do, some, do it ourselves. So we will be consumer facing. Uh, we started in Tel Aviv, uh, like in, in my neighborhood, it was like one street. Uh, which we put like Colu stickers, uh, this business accepts Colu. And we had a developer uh, wallet uh, that was based on Bitcoin. So it was actually like going and, and minting on Bitcoin. It was super expensive. It was crazy uh, uh, slow. So uh, the lesson was uh, quickly get it off the, the blockchain. And I think in, in a perspective of, uh, of a few years, it, it's really inspiring to see how much uh, this space uh, moved uh, forward. And I really think... Uh, uh, some of the trade-offs that uh, that we had back then, like do it centralized or decentralized, and and I totally agree with uh, Giuseppe that uh, that said not everything needs to be represented on a blockchain. Uh, blockchain is a means, not an end. I think uh, that was the 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 feeling in 2017 that blockchain uh, is a uh, is a magic word, but it's a bit like Linux for me. Like it's more like Linux. Like it it was Linux was more useful for developers in, in the early days. But now it's ubiquitous, it's everywhere, nobody really feels it. So we think uh, we, we started Fuse with the, this idea of let's make this technology something that uh, they don't really feel, they don't really touch. Um, I actually made a, a small demo because uh, I didn't want uh, to go through launching everything, but you can actually go to the website. You don't need technical knowledge, you can just mint uh, a, a, a currency or just use DAI. It doesn't have to be like a new currency, it could be. Um, uh, any, any Ethereum uh, uh, token. Um, and what we did is, uh, is just make it accessible. So I'm sharing my screen now uh, for a community that I created for uh, Community Currency Alliance. And again, I said that uh, we're building a layer below, uh, um, uh, below Giuseppe and we actually, let's see. I'll, I think I need to join the, the yeah. Yeah, Fuse.io looks like it's making Giuseppe's job starting these things, like the technical side, just a breeze. At least that's yeah. from what I can see is that the, the, you know, obviously there's a lot of work to making a currency, a lot of cultural work that needs to be done for it to ever work. But uh, in the technical stuff, that almost doesn't matter. But it looks like Fuse.io makes the technical stuff just like yeah. something you don't have to worry about. So actually, we, we've been working a lot with uh, Giuseppe. I actually met him uh, 
uh, in uh, Sardinia last year, and uh, we've actually been in touch since uh, the days. And I think uh, that those collaborations are really important. I, I, I'm really looking at, at an infrastructure level at what you can do with blockchains, but I really focus on, on this uh, use case, which is a long tail, low volume, high velocity use cases where you need the, uh, a currency where you can move it uh, from side to side with a model that is sim more similar to SMSs than to Visa. So if we can just make our payments work in push, and if we can make our payments work with a fixed uh, fee instead of uh, doing a lot of fraud detection, consumer protection, uh, uh, risk management. There's a lot of costs that are really irrelevant when I want to just pay at the store. And I think community currencies didn't really um, uh, go through that phase. So uh, I'm going now uh, to, like, this is our default community. If you go to the App Store, uh, iOS and, or Android. Um, I'm just uh, going to switch to the community I just created. And the whole idea is that uh, this uh, wallet makes this community usable. So a user joins the community. We're creating a, a contract for him. Um, and uh, this contract is, uh, is a proxy contract called, uh, it's, it's actually Argent contracts. We use the Argent for this. Uh, and now I'm joining the Community Currency Alliance and I'm getting 50 CCA. And if I want to send it to any, any one of my contacts on my phone, uh, let's send it uh, to my brother. Uh, that's it. That's the whole process. So the whole idea is that the, um, the transaction needs to be fast and it needs to be non-custodial. Uh, it needs to be um, without fees and uh, instant. So I think we're bridging the gap. I think we're still not fully there, but this uh, application is open source. Again, part of this vision to just give the code Give uh, like release the code, release uh, the infrastructure, uh, all the IP around it, so no one company can do all the the money from selling it or you know mining data over it or making fees with it. So uh, the the only thing that you can't fork is actually the network itself, which approves the transactions. Which again, I, I don't think like when we're looking at long tail of communities, I don't think there will be like one infrastructure that will be running all of this. There will be the Wixes and the WordPresses and the Shopify's and the Amazons, and they're all doing the same thing, but in different models. I think uh, Fuse has a, a, as a room there just to help people, you know, onboard. Uh, so that's the the quick demo. Yeah, I can I can share it uh, later. Um, wow. Also, a store plugin Fiat Ramp. There's a bunch of stuff I can show, but the the bottom line is that uh, we're no longer at this trade off of you know centralized decentralized. Some of the data. You know, it doesn't have to be on the blockchain. Suddenly, you see those things that can. So, I mean, I I'm blown away that you just did that. Just sent some, uh, some created a currency, got to join yes. join it, and then just sent it. I, but I gotta understand, how did you get an address generated for your brother? So it's a proxy wallet. Uh, we're creating every uh, 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 an account on on the user behalf, and he controls it with a private key on the phone. When a, user's, uh, when a user doesn't have an account on Fuse, we create an account on his behalf and he claims it when he, he logs with his phone number. The, the whole idea was to, you know, uh, no fees, no public keys, no private keys. Like that's like one of the, on, the biggest challenges that we're trying to, to do. Um, so a 90 year old person can use it. My grandfather uh, uh, has a Facebook account, is very active. Uh, I really think that uh, <laughs> I'm looking at those use cases, you know, falafel store sellers, we need to make this uh, uh, usable by them. And for that, we need to like erase crypto. Um, and, and actually uh, Giuseppe, with Giuseppe, we're talking a lot about how we can make it actually usable for all people, like a lot of things from, from real life, because again, I'm not specialist in the use case, uh, but I really try to narrow what we're trying to do uh, to exactly Giuseppe's world. Very cool. Okay, just just to go. I'm sorry. I, I always have these technical hangups. So you create a contract wallet for someone, and yes. and do you have uh, as like uh, the Fuse.io central provider has some sort of like uh, ownership or or creation? No, of it's that uh, it's 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 issued on the on the Fuse network. Uh, it's exactly like Argent on Ethereum, but and then on on Fuse. And, and then. 
And then when the person signs on, they create an address for themselves. And then somehow that address gets ownership yeah. over that yeah. contract wallet. Think about it like escrow. It's, uh, it's waiting for a person to redeem it. Uh, actually, there's a bunch of companies that build stuff like that. With contracts, you can do very efficient escrow. Uh, you can do expiration. If somebody didn't redeem it, it goes back. Like there's a bunch of stuff. It, it, it's endless. With contracts just give a lot, a lot of uh, uh, ways to, to make it, uh, you know, rate limits that we got from Argent, uh, uh, social recovery, uh, uh, things that uh, really don't require our, our developers to build. Just the fact that we fit the protocol, you know, we can benefit from all those features. That's amazing. I didn't know Argent was so far along that it was so forkable and, and uh, nice to no, work No, the with. contracts, only the contracts. Our, oh. co our wallet is actually fully open source, back end, front end. It's built in Flutter. It's for iOS, Android, desktop. Amazing. Um, it's, uh, but uh, we use the Argent's con contracts and that's the nice thing about crypto. You can mix and match. And now we have interoperability with Argent, which is, I think, very important that wallets can exchange between themselves, being wallet agnostic. Well, anyone else got a question? Um, somebody was asking about the, the, re the revenue model for, for Fuse. Uh, we have a question here from Matthew Slater. So we are a, a network that uh, you need uh, uh, to pay a fee, just like on uh, Mainnet or XDAI, it's very similar. Uh, we want it uh, uh, to have to be one cent per transaction. Costs don't, don't need to be free. There is a cost, but the cost of ownership of the infrastructure shouldn't grow. Um, so that's the, the vision that if people can uh, do transaction in a low cost, they will do just more transactions. So what we, we're visioning is in three years from now, uh, easily 100 million transactions a day. So I'm not saying only on, on our infrastructure, but you know, in day-to-day in -day use cases, we saw it in, in Tel Aviv with Colo, there's a very strong uh, consumer demand for uh, payments on mobile. It doesn't have anything to do with, uh, with community currencies. People just want to pay with their phone. Uh, we think uh, Visa is not giving the goods, like it's not really something like, it's like, you know, you leapfrog computers. Some countries will leapfrog Visa. Uh, any other questions? I think we're good for now. Okay. I mean, I, I know we could keep going because I got lots more technical questions, but I, I'm really excited to hear also Teodoro's uh, research in, in this space. Uh, you're a, a PhD researcher, and, and it sounds like you've been di diving deep into both of these projects too. Uh, you want to tell us more? Yes, yes. Uh, maybe my speech will be less exciting because, uh, uh, as you said, uh, coming from the academic world. Uh, but yeah, my the purpose of my research is actually to uh, develop uh, monitoring tools and um, <clears throat> and uh, give to community currency systems such kind of uh, possibility to uh stabilize themselves as a currency system but also uh, how um, one of my earliest question is how can we use community currency system to stabilize the entire economic system because uh, uh, one of my research hypotheses is that community currency systems systems are not just good for the members but uh, they have there is some side effect on the uh, on the whole economic system and um, I wanted to share with you just a few slides. Uh, I hope it won't be too boring. C can you see my slides? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so basically, um, so basically today I want to see just, I, want to, I wanted to say just a few things about uh, uh, one of the main concepts uh, that I'm trying to, to study and analyze in uh, community currency systems, and it is cyclic motives. Now I will explain what motive means, um, but uh, what is important to say is that these uh, cyclic motives, let's say cyclic patterns, may be related to uh, the income distribution, the price dynamics, and the resilience of uh, the whole economic system. Um, Okay, so um, just a few uh, words to um, explain very simple to explain uh, what I'm talking about in very simple words. So 
Uh, I'm, I'm a network scientist, so my PhD is in network science. So what, so what we study is network, in this case, the transaction network. And when we talk about the network, we can just think about a set of nodes and links, where the links are the transaction that the users uh, daily do. Um, another, another concept I have to stress out is the subgraph, or uh, let's say subnetwork that is a part of the network, so a subset of the network, which includes um, part of the nodes and the links of the original, original network. And a motif is a subgraph that repeats over time. And uh, we have statistical, um, there are statistical methods that we can use in order to infer the importance of uh, of this subgraph or this subnetwork. And um, uh, for instance, here you can see uh, tried significance profile. This was from, a, from, a, from another paper in which the authors were trying to uh, estimate, let's say the importance of uh, each motive. In this case, uh, you can see here the number of motive uh, you have uh, this motive number one, number two, number three. All of these are motive of length three because they involve um, three nodes. Uh, so why cyclic motives are important? So here I just try to summarize a bit the literature we have um, about motives, uh, about uh, um, cyclic motives in particular. Um, in this case, you can see in this image, um, I, we can call this economy, it's a direct, directed acidic graph economy. Why? Because there are no, there are no cycles here. As you can see, uh, let's, let's assume that we start with uh, an, economy, an economy with just three nodes, A, B, and C. Um, this is called also open triad or uh, also three, tree-like stru structure. And uh, in this case, there are no, there are no cycles. Uh, uh, what happened that in this kind of economy is, uh, is actually really, really unstable. So usually uh, you, you can find a redistributor that can be a bank or can be uh, the state, which try to, um, to move the surplus that the node C is going to accumulate and to reinvest this, sur this surplus. And uh, how in, and uh, yeah, we can, we, we can have uh, downstream upstream investments or we can uh, have uh, another investment that try to create another path. So in this case, for instance, we can see that uh, B is actually uh, the, the node with the, um, that is the broker of this economy. And then we, we, we can, uh, the redistributor in this case, let's say this bank, uh, want to invest um, to the creation of uh, a new node, B prime, in order to have another uh, path in this case. But still, in this economy, there is no cycle. And uh, what we will observe is that there is a price effect. So we will see that uh, there is a, uh, an increasing um, level of price at the beginning, then we can see also an income effect because there is these uh, transactions that move from a node A to the node C. Uh, and this is a, a typical example of a, a cyclic graph economy. So in this, in this kind of uh, economy, uh, we can observe an increasing performance at individual level, but also uh, at systemic level. And, um, and uh, this is an amazing paper and that uh, was co-authored also by Giuseppe and it is actually about Sardex. And this was the first paper um, that really opened my mind um, because they tested this uh, kind of positive effect uh, on, uh, on the economy. And uh, Sardex as a mutual credit is actually designed to uh, boost cyclic motives in an economic system. So the positive effect is not just for the Sardex people or the Sardex users, but there is also a side effect, positive side effect on the overall economy. 
Um, okay, this is just uh, some uh, random theory, but just to say that uh, uh, the fact that uh, this performance, we, we observed this performance, increasing performance is just is actually uh, based on a game theory uh, studies um, that uh, it's so it's possible to prove that uh, this kind of cycle are actually linked to uh, an increased stability and increased efficiency of the economics of the economic network. Um, okay, this is another in these slides. Um, I just reported uh, uh, partially uh, what is the main object of my research. So I'm trying to understand uh, how we can study more these cyclic motives. And um, so I try to create different uh, categories. So white cyclic motive or black cyclic motive in order to understand uh, uh, what is the, um, the impact, how they are linked these motives to the rest of the economy. So for instance, a white motive is a motive that for which the input the input is less than the output of the motive itself in terms of uh, transaction values. And uh, in, the, in the case of black motive is the opposite. So the input is bigger than uh, the output of the motive. Um, just a few words about uh, the fact that uh, we can also study the presence of black and white star because black and white star, uh, as you can as you can see here in the in the plot, um, can be also related to uh, stability and efficiency of, uh, of a network. Uh, just a few steps, uh, or my next steps in my research will be, uh, as I said, to improve the, this algorithm to study the flow motives and how these flow motives can be used to improve and monitor and eventually um, provide some correction to, uh, to any transaction network and, and of course in any community currency network. And the other, the other branch of research that is really promising uh, is how can uh, this community currency be used in order to stabilize the entire economic system. So at the moment uh, I, I'm planning to, to work better with, with uh, SARDEX and uh, I'm, I already start started to work uh, uh, a bit with the uh, grassroots economics and uh, the Sarafo network. And yeah, for the moment, I think I said everything. Thank you. Thank you, Toyoro. Actually, we, we have a question from Will Rosick himself. Shout out to, to Will in Kenya uh, from, from grassroots economics. He's asking if you have had time to finish looking at the Kenyan current data of 2020. And if you could talk about the K-cycle centrality as a way to reward users and scale a basic income. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, I, yeah, this, I feel a bit blamed by Will, but I'm sorry, Will. No, yeah, um, yeah, I'm, I'm a bit uh, in late and actually with uh, my research plan. Um, yeah, I start working on uh, the data of 2019 and not 2020. And uh, I already found a very interesting, uh, very interesting uh, uh, motives happening there. Um, I, I will come soon with some results, I, I swear. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, so this is something that we discussed a, a lot with Will uh, privately. And because uh, mm, from one side, uh, we have uh, a mutual, I have, this mutual credit system that per se is already designed to to boost cyclic motives. On the other side, I'm working with uh, Will, and we are discussing with Will how a system that is not mutual credit can be uh, used, can be um, uh, yeah, can be used, can be what to say, can be um, changed, can be modified in a way that boosts cyclic motives also in that case. So we were, we were thinking uh, uh, to, uh, so the, 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 the optimal idea will be to uh, reward people with higher, higher uh, cyclic centrality and especially um, white cyclic centrality. So in this case, you reward those people who are actually using that currency in a way that um, 
makes it work and makes it uh, impactful for the entire economic system. And yeah, this, this will be the optimal. Can you go a little deeper into what is white cyclic and black cyclic? What's the difference? I, yeah, I may miss yeah. That. yeah, so um, I, I can share again the screen. Uh, okay, this is maybe a super scary uh, slide, but I will try just to focus on uh, ABC. So in this case, we have a motive uh, that is of length three because we have three nodes. And then uh, we have uh, the average amount of, uh, let's say, money that they, that they are uh, exchanging, that is two. Then we have uh, uh, and the input, um, the in zero equal zero means like that this motive uh, is not, there is no incoming uh, currency to this money, to this uh, motive. And on the other hand, um, the output of this money is five. So in this case, we have a link equal to five. And so in this case, since uh, the input is zero and the output is five, so the output is bigger than the input, we can say that this is a white. Um, it, may, it may sound like a bit uh, trivial, but actually from an economic point of view, it means that uh, if this is a business group, for instance, or it's, this is a supply chain, it means that uh, the value of the input in this supply chain is uh, inferior to the output of this supply chain. So from an economic point of view, uh, what uh, my research hypothesis is that uh, in, a, in, in a stable economy, we need some kind of balance between white and black uh, uh, motives. I don't know if this answered to the question. Well, I'm, I'm a little confused with the, it, it kicks Can I out. Try, yeah, go ahead. Try to translate. <laughs> Because uh, I think I, uh, it, it fits also based on like uh, partly of the work we've done like on, on cyc cyclic motives, I think I can kind of understand also from the discussion we've had with Teodoro. So uh, like the basic thing is, uh, um, regard I would say regardless of the nature of the system design, whether it be uh, community credit that's uh, closed loop or, or sort of, uh, mm -hmm. Uh, versus a uh, more open system or where you can convert. But regardless of that, uh, in any local economy, and it could be an island, but it could be uh, the greater Bay Area region, I don't know, you know. But in, in what they generally, they talk about bio-regional economies, which is probably the right scale for most of, 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 of the stuff. Um, so you have, uh, let's say, an island, make it simple, with, with Sardinia, and you have uh, uh, cyclical transactions. So me uh, selling to Teodoro, uh, selling to you, selling to Mark, and Mark selling back to me. So that, that's, that's a cycle. Uh, now, uh, and there's also, though, uh, and Teodoro is right in pointing this out, that you have inputs and outputs and starting conditions. And whatever the network, I think that it is actually true that some cycles drain resources where others bring in resources. And actually, I would argue that in a, in a, in a sane economic system, this stuff should be on a dashboard, so to speak. But secondly, like economic actors themselves should have the aware awareness of what is going on. But we are very far from this. I can tell you that in Europe, the best data that we have on inter-regional trade, so like Sardinia trading with 340 some others European regions in the single market, like the best data that we have, and thank God we have it, is 10 years old. And, and nobody's updating it. And so if I would like to do something, like I don't even know. We know by, by some research that 
like there, there's some sort of there's, there's this thing called propensity to trade and that propensity to trade decreases with distance like uh, 250 kilometers is acceptable for everything after that it becomes a, a bit tricky but apart from that like i think the work that teodoro and the network scientists are doing on community currencies is incredibly valuable because uh, apart really from doing transactions like if you are like we are actually and common stock on on another side is doing the same sort of work more on the simulation but the funny thing is uh, at least in my case and main, and some other cases we've got living systems now like 10 years running and i can tell you like probably migrating contracts from mainnet one, two, three, that stuff is hard, but also migrating real users, like even on a normal database, you know, uh, like it's hell of a job. And, 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 and most of these people don't understand the tech behind. They want stuff that works. But I can say that in terms of community currency, but I would say in economic, as a social science, as a field, I mean, there, there's lots of work to be done because we don't know. Uh, we have lots of data, but it's not correlated. Like, I, as I told you, you wanna look at what uh, Bayern does with, uh, I don't know, 30 regions with which Bayern trades or whatever the region in Spain. And it's 10 years old and you don't know. Period. Nobody knows. So they that, that that's the sorry state of the of the field when it comes to first, like we ignore what money is, what credit is, what currency is, and blah blah. But then, like the policymakers take decision on I don't know what kind of data. Surely not what I can find online. And that's the yes. end of the rant. But <laughs> yes. it's a positive. At least, uh, you know, that uh, up until 10, 20 years ago, all the community currency were paper. So uh, at least we're in a better, better shape than that. You know, I, I read the, I remember reading like EU funded project. I don't remember where in Europe, maybe Holland, uh, that uh, the, they did the community currency, but the, the summary is like, we don't know how much was used or printed. Like we, <laughs> it's, it's paper. No idea. Yeah, that's a, that's a, nine, a 1999 project. I saw yes. the doc and I was like, oh, wow. And what's the impact? Oh, nobody yeah. knows. <laughs> yeah, even even before that with WEIR, WEIR uh, there was a, um, a research about the uh, counter-cyclical uh, aspects of the WEIR, but they're saying, I don't remember the number, like 40 or 60% of the transactions are not, not official, you know, under the table. So... <laughs> Crazy. You, you, with digital uh, money, like it's impossible, really. Yeah. On that note, we have a question from the audience, uh, specifically to Teodoro, but feel free to answer. Is what is your definition of community currencies? If you have any or many or who who asked the question? It's Mark uh, Marco. His name is Marco. Oh, Marco. Matteo, yeah. no, Matteo Vanzini. Sorry. Okay, Matteo. <laughs> um, well, I can try. I don't yeah. know. We have a community currency uh, or. Our community credit scheme. What is that? It is uh, people getting to together around one idea, and the basic basic idea is that community should have the freedom and self governance. I would add to take economic matters more in their own end, and starting with a credit system is a good way to reconnect and uh, the, the the economy that generally is strained and and is like completely smashed apart and is an empowerment it's it, in that in that sense a community credit system or a community currency uh, is a community saying well whatever help might come will be there but we take matters a little bit more into our own hands and in in our case it was really about uh, sort of I'm, I, want, I don't want to use the word survival uh, but existence and right to exist I would say that yeah 
I would only just add that uh, it's like uh, um, everything that is not top down but bottom up. Like uh, 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 the fact that uh, you can uh, just uh, like it's you could you could argue that point systems, air miles, you know, some some sort of like communities. I, I think that the big differentiator is is the fact that uh, that people can just decide to use it to achieve a certain goal, um, which is social. I think it's less about uh, profits or money, even though I think uh, they should have a revenue model like uh, community currencies. Teodoro, you got anything to add? This is great, great question. Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, I, I think I totally agree with um, with uh, with Giuseppe. What Giuseppe said, um, I will add something. There is a great definition that is given by Jerome Blanc in a paper of in, in, written in two thousand twelve, and uh, in that paper, there the the authors they are trying to define what a community currency is using. Uh, uh, citing also Karl Polanyi, but uh, I think that uh, the main point uh, are already addressed, have been addressed by Giuseppe. So the self-organization, uh, the democratic governance, uh, uh, and the social purpose. So it's community-oriented. So the idea is that uh, um, the idea is that behind the the main purpose of a community currency should be uh the community wealth well-being yeah i i just want to I, I i've never heard it said so well thank you guys that was a, a great definition for community currencies and i i just i, I couldn't agree more it's like we the economic rails are an abstract concept that communities are buying into they accept this and they have the power to create whatever economic rails they want, whether it's their choice or if they wanna buy into the European Union's choice, it's up to them. And community currencies enable that choice. And you guys are doing amazing work at, at making it easy for people to take that choice and empower themselves. Uh, and thank you guys for coming and uh, sharing your knowledge with us. And hopefully, uh, hopefully you'll share this with your friends uh, like the video and subscribe and we'll see we'll do this again soon thank you guys thank you thank Bye. you so much thank you, thank you for coming Bye.